Welcome back to the Dusty Tome. Today we have a very special tasty treat for you. Our good friend Stephen Sinclair has been working on a series of really short spookers called Express Horror. And the first episode of the series is called Revert. And we were lucky enough to be able to get our hands on it first. So buckle up. And let's see what our buddy Mr. Sinclair has drummed up for us this time. And hopefully, we'll see you on the other side. Revert From the Express Horror Series By Stephen Sinclair Chapter 1 Nora had woken groggily up to fading summer darkness in a field. There had been a man in a long hooded black robe walking slowly towards her. He held a huge serrated flint knife. She couldn't see his face because of the hood. But she had recognized his strange lilting musical voice. Nora, dear, the black oat of the woods is here, and Lord Shuttermaw has come. And he had softly chuckled as he advanced. <laughs> Nora had staggered to her feet, somehow been able to run, down across the field towards some woods, despite, or perhaps because, of her terror and confusion. For what seemed to her only moments before she had been in this man's house with her entire family. They had just finished a nice meal. Her last memory had been of one of her brothers and her father collapsing, boneless, to the floor. Then darkness had taken her. Now she was running. She felt completely naked because her head was bare, her long black hair streaming behind her. Normally it was always covered up when she was outside. The man had come into her community two years before. Her gran had never taken to him. Although he was what was called a revert, he had always remained for her gran. One of those people and her gran had used the names and said the things that were always used and said about those people in Nora's community, said behind closed doors. Her gran was her dad's mom, and her opinion had some value, but she was of course outweighed by Nora's dad, brothers, and uncles. The man had certain advantages. Nora was a good girl. She knew her place. But she was aware the man had helped her dad and uncles out financially. And he was big and, as one of her brothers said, well able to handle himself. A disloyal part of Nora suspected these were two of the things her male relatives always cared about the most. She internally, furiously denied this voice. Also, the man had somehow helped with some of her various uncle's other troubles. Nora's gran said the troubles were all the fault of those people and their disgusting ways. She said all her boys were good, and that... It's like what happens when you leave meat around when there are cats about. Nora had vociferously agreed and told her grand things that went on at the high school and the park and other stuff. On more than one occasion, her grand had embraced her and given her the ultimate compliment of saying to Nora's dad, You don't have to worry about this one. She's our good girl. The man had really appeared to be what he seemed. And there were other things. He didn't have the normal 
estuary English accent most of those people had wherever you went in the UK. He had the lilting voice of the islands and mountains of the far northwest. When the big man even said no, it came out gently, persuasively, with extra emphasis on the O oh part. Her mom had once asked him where he was originally from, and he had laughed quietly and mentioned the Hebrides. One of those wee places there. Two of them nearby have names that are like eggs and dirt. Mine has a daft name also. One of the seasons of the year. And her mom had told her he had then given her a little, honest to goodness, respectful little bow of the head. Completely natural like, she had told her. And the man had something those people never had. What the ignorant called fanaticism. But what those in the community sometimes described as true sincere ardor. The posh examples of those people, who were not real people anyway, might talk about things like freedom and democracy all they wanted. But you knew it had no substance, or rather weight. One of her uncles was political. He often talked about useful idiots and watermelons green on the outside, red on the inside. But they all felt the big red-headed man's sincerity. They were all won over. The man really believed. Chapter 2 Now Nora was fleeing in the woods. The rank undergrowth and trees seemed to want to grab her and hold her. So he could come and get her. With something behind thought she knew the trees were looking at her. They were his allies. Even in her terror, she was appalled at herself, knew she was having idolatrous thoughts. The shadows seemed to crawl. She could hear furtive movement, only not so furtive. They wanted her to hear. For she had seen other cowled figures. They were all around, and she heard him calling out softly to her in that lilting voice. Nora, dear, listen. Whimpering, she tried to hide in the undergrowth. She clasped her hands desperately over her ears, but still she heard more than enough. Before the false mother and her unholy son, before the cloth was laid and the cross was hung, other mothers, other sons. Desperately, she tried to crawl away. She fought down the urge to scream. She got up and tried once again to run. A branch caught in her hair. She stumbled and fell, screaming in terror. Mothers with a thousand sons, they danced under the trees, where the offerings dripping hung. His laughter rang out, <laughs> followed by that of other voices. Don't be confused, Nora, dear. I am a sincere revert. Just a bit more of one than you thought. A bit further back. And your dear Gran was wrong. I'm even less of a secret atheist than she was. After all, you people are only one step off from being that. We are many, many more. Hooded figures pounced on her. They had her. She was still screaming as they bound her hands behind her back. She was helpless. They blindfolded her gagged her. Softly she heard them say, whispering near her ear. She could feel his breath on her. I do know that you're a good girl. Desperately she tried to cringe away, struggle free. Softly he said, Don't worry, you're going to get to stay a good girl. For always and always. They dragged her, made her stumble forward. She heard voices singing. From the rivers to the seas, the joyous song we own one shall always be. We who had the sun and the stars stolen from us. Rip 
drag her forwards. She heard him say, If I may misquote a great man, it is time for her to keep her appointment with the wicker man. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not gonna lie. That one made my insides feel kind of funny. I'm not sure if I have to go to the bathroom, or if I already did. Thanks to Katie Joe for showing up to do a quick vocal for Grand, and thanks a bunch to Steven Sinclair for giving us the honor of putting this little ditty together for you. Lastly, thank you for hanging out and listening to weird stories with us. Please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel to keep doing what we do. And we hope to see you next time we open up and read from the Dusty Tome. <laughs>